again. Um, now let's talk about, again, we're talking about the seal system. We're talking about how it reacts. It reacts to external forces and reacts to, um, now we're going to talk about the electrical, okay? Yeah. Loading requirements, okay? Very important. Like something that they did makeshift, 
that the electrical may be in question, and you have anything like compressor related, all verify your incoming voltage. Alright? But there's some good news. And that's what we're gonna get into now. A little bit of component uh, explanation and training. Can somebody read? Can uh, you read this for me, young man? Fortunately, most compressors are protected by an external device, overload, which gives power to the motor in the event of an overcurrent or overheating condition. I have some for display. Allow me one second. I want you to take one and pass it around. show y'all how we're going to test them for them to make sure they work working good. Now, I want to show you guys how to test these. Young man, show me on um, continuity on this machine. Put that ball meter on continuity. Does anybody not know how to use a ball meter or, put a, uh, or select continuity or almost? There's no, no, now's the top. I want you to test them. Listen, anytime you're doing a continuity check, always test your leads. Let me ask you that vote meter. Here's Brother B. When I, when I insult myself, because I like to give y'all my F ups so y'all know how I screwed up. This is what Brother B would do. Brand new rookie. Have it partially inserted, right? And then want to take the test. Oh, I'm not getting any continuity. I'm no good. Huh. I'm not good because look. So always make sure. Now let's go ahead and conduct our test. What you want to do is, you want to put them one in here, one in here. Go ahead and do it and tell me if that's continuity and then pass it over. Pass it to that brother there. Let me give you a four meter too. Did you test the, uh, the overload? I'm gonna test you. I'm gonna show you how to test the overload. Can you test the overload. Test the overload. Put one here and one here. I just take one of them. One of them. Yeah. And the uh, relay, I, I took it out. I tested it again. This test will come back, but and it was gone. So. Say again, bro. I, I tested it. Um, you tested it bad when I was on the compressor. I mean, like, yeah. Oh. Then I tested it again, and it tested it good. But I kind of shook it, and then it was bad. So it was like broken inside. Maybe at the time of the test, the contact was, was yeah. closing, and yeah. that's why you were getting that. But during you shaking yeah. it, it broke the contact, and that's why you weren't getting continuity. Yeah. So now we all see how to test these. And do you know how to, okay, so that's your overload. Give them a relay. Gentlemen, I want y'all to take pride in this. I want y'all to take pride in what y'all are doing. Oftentimes, people get to a refrigerator, they look at, a, at the compressor, they don't even know what. They put their hand on it. That's the test. I'm showing you how to not only test the compressor, but let's test the protection devices that protect the compressor. Remember, it's in series with the compressor. And just like the Christmas lights, if it's ball ball compressor, well, prior to that compressor, one of those ETC uh, relays or overloads go bad, the circuit. So it's good to know how to test these components, okay? Now, yes sir. Um the show is waiting for all the person. Yes sir. 
You have one thing left to remind me. Yeah, about the, the bottom of the side side page. So return though. Now you have two. Okay. All right, guys. So uh, just to recap, again, guys, anything from here on is built off these fundamentals. If we don't have the fundamentals, if we don't have a standard or an understanding of how all of this works, we don't have anything to test against. We, we need a standard, all right? So I'm going to fly through it. Stop me if you don't know, but just one more time. And then before we move on into some actual hands-on stuff, we said coming out, out, out of the compressor. Where's that free arms first stop? Will it be vapor or will it be? It'll be vapor, but it'll be turned into liquid. That's just one. All right. After it comes out of the condenser, where does it go? What is the purpose of that? Recently, we circulate the so like condensation build up, the, oh yeah. uh, sweating, sweating on the on the on the beach where the gasket and the uh, bone head ends, the mulligan. All right, that's why they run that final loop of the condenser builder before it returns back to where we can actually see it. It then goes where to the membrane device, which is also. Uh, filter dryer. What is the filter dryer? It's a filter. Removes it moisture, contaminants right. from your system. Yeah. After it comes out of the filter dryer, where does it go? Capillary. After it goes out of the capillary, where does it go next? Evaporator. Brother, brother, the uh, the one. Yeah. Go to that black um, top down and open the freezer door, and you're gonna see where that evaporator, where that capillary goes into the evaporator. Mm -hmm. Now you see it? Yeah. Okay. So again, out of the filter dryer to the capillary. capillary. Once it goes through the uh, evaporator, uh, from the capillary it goes to the evaporator. After it's done with the evaporator, back to the and it does that indefinitely. Okay? We spoke about pressures. We spoke about pressures. What did we say a normal, normal operating system pressure would be on your low side? What did we say? Compressor. When it goes to that condenser coil, 
what should it be when we put our hands in? Protection devices. I showed you how to trust them. I showed you how to troubleshoot. Yes, sir. Somebody got a question. Yes, sir. It's like it has a, it has a protection for over current and overheat and overheating. How about on the current? They mentioned that low voltage causes compressor start problems. As with any motor, the compressor draws high current into no, the motor. We have a speed. We have a protection for on the current. It shows we have a protection for over current. No. We have a protection for on the current, right? No, but you already know that anything under one away will absolutely be destroyed. Okay. No, we don't have any protection. Alright. Again, we spoke about air movement. In a, in, a, in a single evaporator refrigerator, how many fans are we going to have? What are the names? Are you saying a whole unit? Yeah, yes. What if, I'll do a curveball, if we have a dual evaporator? Three. Yeah, one in condenser. So you talking about the thing right here that's called a press? Yeah, yeah, that's what you talking about the one inside. Yeah. No, total, total, total. But it's three, both of them, right? No, because if one is single, evap you only have one evaporator fan in the oh, freezer, in the and your condenser fan right. in, your in the outside. I know that. I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 you're right. Brother, right. you're just an ant. No, 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 I should know that. Yeah. I'm not taking it. Because I'm thinking, for some reason, I'm thinking it's a fan inside of a refrigerator or something like that. It's not. It's not a new heat valve. Without two? Huh? What's the answer to? For single heat valve, two. But that's for an evaporator. I mean, for, for a double. Dual? Yeah. Dual? Two. Yeah, because on one evaporator, you'll have a cover, and you'll have a fan, and then on okay. your freezer, the same things. And then in the rear, you have your condenser fan. You may even have ice maker fans. Oh, so, you know, yeah, they even have ice maker fans. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Where is that? Is that a camo I've seen that with? Where it's like um, they do got it. I see where they had a fan for the uh, for the uh, evaporator, right? In the freezer. They didn't have another fan next to that one to blow air up into the recirculation. Oh, up to like that. Recirculation, yeah. yeah. And then they might have one in the refrigerator box. I could be wrong. If you had the model, we could look it up. Yeah, it's a recirculation when I have Yeah, and in the recirculation when the one on the right, 
Yeah. Froze yeah. up. Like, and then it, yeah. It froze up and then it threw a code. It's like the Bentley about that, too. Uh-huh. Who was that? Uh, Samsung Quartet. That they move? Well, we were testing. They move, I don't know. I think she tired. I believe. I'm not sure. I couldn't tell you what that That's who we had in the shop, right? They move? Yeah. Okay. How often do we run into the table for that? I'm not on the same one, man. I haven't seen one either. I did a ring that I think like oven. Oh, oven. Oven. I have a beverage that that's on. Okay. Guys, let's talk about that evaporator fan. Um, and that condenser fan and the importance of it. If the evaporator fan stops, heat transfer increases. I'm oh, sorry, ceases. It fails. It stops. Heat transfer. Remember Rick was talking about those coils? He said, you'll get some cool in the first couple of coils. Well, when that evaporator fan stops, heat transfer ceases and the freezer temperatures rise. Likewise, if the condenser fan failure, if you have a condenser fan failure, it will inhibit the condenser's ability to release heat. Remember, we said that things really don't cool down like how we think. It just, the, the heat, you know, it reduces the heat. It goes from 80 to 70. That's cooler. 70 is cooler than 80. We just think it's cooler. So again, that cup of boiling tea that's 200 degrees, you put it in that zero degree uh, freezer, that 200 degree difference, now with that condenser fan not being able to release the heat. That, that will affect the uh, system's overall performance. Yeah. Okay, so your fans play a pivotal role. Bear with me now. So I'm gonna put an option in the The air blowing across the condenser is warmer. This reduces the, temp- the temperature differential between the condenser and the air, reduces the ability of the refrigerator to give up the heat. <coughs> Again, further uh, proving the importance of the condenser fan. Okay. Let's not get into this now because this is refrigeration. I want to stick to electric. Okay, in the theory, before we tap into the system, let's exhaust all troubleshooting skills. All right, we arrive to the unit. They say it's not cooling. The user interface says 37 and zero. That's what the preset temp is. You get there, you put in your thermometer, it's obviously not that. Now the game begins. Now the troubleshooting begins. And we know what we're supposed to have. We're supposed to have this, we're supposed to have that. So we're using all of those tools, like a detective, we're trying to get to the bottom of the case. We're going to listen to the fans. Okay. While you're there, open, your eye, open the, the freezer door, put your eye on the back wall. You see it frozen up. See it full of defaults. Open your fresh food door. Put your hand by the dampers. Do you feel air coming out of it? No. Is your evaporator fan running? Yes. Okay, maybe we want to look at that there. No, maybe we want to look at the evaporator fan. We spoke about the return duct. Spoke about the importance of that guy throws a big watermelon right there and blocks it. Blocks it. How's that air gonna, you know, or he takes a big, whatever, he just squedges that return up. <clears throat> so, again, guys, seal system is the last thing that you want to touch with the refrigerator. You want to exhaust all checks. 
but we need to understand what we're looking for and its intended purpose and how does it look. Again, you spoke about uh, PT charts and all that, but I don't want to get into that. We got about 45 minutes before class is done. I want to get into a little bit of uh, Let's get into a little bit of component disassembly, component identification, component testing. So please, if we can all go to any one of these, uh, uh, three guys on one, three guys on the other. This is the assignment. I want you to disconnect the condenser fan and I want you to measure voltage. Disconnect condenser fan and measure voltage. That may be DC, that may be DC. I want you to tell me, if you don't know, no problem. But look, try to figure it out and see if you have an AC DC fan. And I want you to, and let's learn how to measure for voltage at that condenser. And then we got to do it on the inside of the evaporator. What's good, bro? You good? Good, good, man. Tools is down Tools. here. Tools, okay. Tap down with the bros. For the fan. But, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. yeah, but look what I'm you did though. But by you doing that, can you measure voltage there? Like if you stick your leads in there, you gonna get any voltage? No, no, you'll get it from here. Ah, uh -huh. so let's plug it into there and then stick yeah. our leads up in there. We gotta plug the refrigerator though. It's unplugged. It's unplugged? Go ahead and unplug. Oh, do this one then. Oh, while you're doing that one, brother, go ahead and tell me that. Is your is your fridge AC or DC? Ah, you beat me to it. You beat me to it. Is it AC or DC? Your fan. No, come down here. Look. Look, watch this. Look, come down here. How about this one that doesn't say no money? Oh, it's on the back of the fan? DC 12. See that right there? DC 12B. You do see that? Yeah, this DC also. Can can everybody get down here? I want you guys to uh because we're talking about fans and we're talking about the importance of them. What what happens when you guys check for 120? You're not gonna you're gonna come and say, brother B, that fan don't work. It's not that it don't work, it's that it's DC. I don't see the sign on it, but it's I'll show you, I'll show you. Don't worry. I got you. Let me take a look. Let me take a look with you. You may have to get a little uh, flashlight because um We're gonna have to take this blade off too. <laughs> so I removed the blade, and there's a little sticker on on the under here that tells you what it is. Right there, that little sticker. If you can't see it, there's three quarter screws, quarter inch screws. You're gonna have to take it out and pull the evaporator here. Yeah. Condenser. That's a DC though, right? Because I don't know. I don't pretty, think so. You don't think so, bro? And the reason why, let me see your light. Uh, the reason why I don't think so. Oh, no, it's not. Look at it, and you can see it. Okay. It's, it's not. Look at your wire sizes. That's always a little trick. Oh, yeah, a little larger. But what, what does it say, though? 115. 115? Yeah. What's the words after that? V, v. A. Does it say VAC? No, I just said no. 115 volts. Okay, well, you know that 115, they talking AC. Yeah, yeah. All right? That's like, that's, that looks almost like... Look at the wire sizes, too. Yeah, it's larger. And now look at your wire sizes on this DC. Another thing, look at this schematic here. Let me show you this schematic. When you see stuff like plus 12, plus 5, 
you, you're dealing with DC circuits. Right. Hold on, condenser. Okay, right here. DC, BL, DC. Man, you got good eyes, man. <laughs> <laughs> nah, look, look. Nah, look, though. Get up under there, right there. Right there. No, nah, I see it. No, no, no. Look, though, brother. Take your time. Ain't no one rushing you. Yeah, Take your BL, time. DC. Ah. Brushless. Brushless. Brushless motor. DC. I see it right there. Yeah. All right. Right here, look. Uh, fan, BL, DC. I can't see that. <laughs> I gotta take a picture. Oh, you can't? Which one is it? Right under in parentheses where my finger is. Okay. That second one? Yeah. Right there, look. BL, DC. Gotcha, gotcha. So in theory, brother B. Right there. Yeah, the, uh, BL, DC. Yeah, okay. so yeah. In theory, brother B. So if we're, we go to a house and the fan isn't working, then uh, like it's not it's not running the fan back here is not running you'll put it in DC check it check the uh, up top to see if you get get that coming through. I got a question, y'all. If no, I'm gonna your 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 the answer. Watch. What if I come to a job and and this fan isn't running, right? This fan here, this condenser fan, it's not running. What would be the desired like test we should conduct? Uh, voltage to it. Right? Right. Yeah. right? Now, what happens if we get the 12 volts DC? If it's apparent in our voltmeter? And it's still not running? And it's still not spinning. You can't change it. That motor back. Yeah, the fan, yeah, the fan back. Did that answer your question? Boy, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Now, what if we're not getting it? We got to go to the board. Yeah. If it's DC, yeah, go to the board. If the compressor's running. Now show me on the board the connectors to that condenser fan. Do you got? I know. I know some know and some don't. And we're gonna get way more into schematics, but this is just to gauge where the class is. Is that right? Yeah, that CN. I can't reset. Two silver blue. Yeah. Two ten pin two to ten. CN seventy five two to ten. Yeah, CN seventy five two. Let me see this. You can uh, let me right here look. You see this? Yeah. You see it coming out of that? Two, yeah. Follow. Goes back to ground. All right, cool. These are your two reference uh -huh. points. Pin ten pin ten and pin two. Can I get you here, Casey? Yeah. Right out the board. C N seventy five. Right here. Silver blue, pin two. Yep. To ground. Pin ten. All right, mm -hmm. cause some, and while you find me that, come here on um, Peter. See that right there? Okay. There's your condenser fan, look. Coming off your condenser fan. Okay. Going back to ground. Pin two. Okay. Pin two ten. and pin 10. Okay. Come here on um, Peter. You know somatics or not really? Yeah. Okay, well, hey, I know two, but it don't hurt to learn. <laughs> <laughs> you see this? Yeah. Condenser fan motor, yep. pin two, yep. coming off, pin 10. Yeah. CN75. Yeah. Come here, what, what uh, color is it? Silver blue. Silver blue and uh, gray? Yeah. The ground. Yeah, but you may see silver blue up here, but down here you may see red, black, and, and, and blue. Oh, okay, got you. You'll see it. Okay, this is, you see that CN75? Y'all found CN75? Come here, big homie. Let me show you. Can, can you give him a little second, just one second? Let me just show him something real quick. Here's your condenser fan. Mm -hmm. Look, it's just a matter of that. Yeah, it's going to be a plug. So it's going to be like one of these plugs. So fan motor. Okay, we're going to see a 75. So we got to see a 75. Pin 2, pin 2, come down, to ground. Pin 2, to pin 10. Why? Because look, right here's your fan. That's the wire. Yeah, look, black, red, and gray. So you look for a plug that has at least those on it. Now, the question was, right? The question was, I'm sorry, let me just place it. The question was, we said <clears throat> we not getting the we not getting the 12 volts. What now? And we said we gotta measure where? Where where's did we locate CN75? Yeah. 
Can I see that? Look, gentlemen. These boards, come here, Peter. These boards have a very unique way of identifying. There's a lot of information on this board. If you come here and you read where my voltmeter lead is, what does that say? It's a CN number. Somebody look in there. CN 40. Ah, show him. Come on. No, nobody left behind. Right there. Look very carefully where my lead is. Mm -hmm. You see it? Mm -hmm. The one? Yep. You got to see it, bro. Yep. You see it? Yep. Everybody see that? It's like, like it's right the right right Go look at it. You All right, it. now look. Y'all see that little diamond, that little triangle? That's your pin one. Yeah. And this connector, that's pin one. Here's pin one on this connector. Here's pin one on this connector. Is it a triangle you say right there? Yeah. I'll show you on this one. Look, from top, top look to right top. here. Here's pin... Uh, I'm trying to show you one. Right here, y'all. Look, you see that little triangle sign? Pin one. Yeah, pin one. Here it go right here. Here it go right here. All right. All right. So now we need to find 75, mm -hmm. right? Let's find it. I think it's P. Right I here. think it's CN70, bro. Ain't it? No, it's on the five level. 75. It's right here. 75? All right. Look, y'all. I'm going to put my voltmeter lead on it. You could back up a little, Peter. Mm -hmm. they, they. Look. CN70. Oh, that's 76. I'm bugging. Is that five or six? Hold on. It's actually seeing 79. That's 76. Hold on, bro. I'm gonna get you the right CN. That's 78. That's 51. That's 90. There goes our guy. Right here. Right there, y'all. There goes our our, our yeah. guy right there. CN 75. Yep. We know because of right here. Look where my voltmeter lead is. Read the uh, markings on it. Peter? So good, take a picture of it. You may need a magnifying glass, guys. No, you know, no problem. Now show me your phone and I'm gonna show you. Take a picture, yeah. Now show me y'all's phone and I'm gonna show you. Nope. The shadow's covering it. Oh, my damn lead yeah, is covering it. Yeah, the shadow's covering it, yeah. Shoot, do it again, but my lead won't be there. It's right up in here. Right there. All right, now you zoom in. You're gonna use your phone. Right here, y'all look. C N. Damn, y'all. Yeah, the shot is covering it. Still. Seven five. Okay. Seven five. Okay. 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 Right. Where's the seven five? The one. Okay. You know what I'm saying? The seven is in the corner. You see right. Seven right there. And but y'all see that? Y'all see that? Shadow. Okay. Okay. Shadow. Okay. Okay. Shadow is covering it. Okay. Y'all see that little not, that little diamond mark? That's our that's our pin one, right? So we're gonna come down to pin two. Look down here on the schematic. Pin two. Right? Yep. Silver blue. Silver blue on pin two. What color is this? Silver. Uh, it's supposed to be silver, silver and blue, blue, but it's just light blue. Or sky blue. Could be sky blue. Look, pin two right here. And if you look carefully, what does it say on the C fan? C fan, yep. Yeah. Condenser fan, yes. Yeah, ah. Nice. Okay. So now we know that's our plus, but we have to have a reference point. Our neutral, our return, right. our plus, our minus, our L1, our neutral. We, we always have to have two points right. that we're measuring, okay? okay? So now we have to find our ground or neutral, which would be green. pin 10, green. green. Green or gray? Gray. Gray. So what I want you to do, gray. So what I want you to do is, watch this. We said DC, right? Yep. Is it plugged in? No. Look at the blade and look at my voltmeter. Right now, that ain't that blade ain't gonna turn. It ain't getting no voltage. But well, watch what happens when them 12 volts come across it. And we're gonna verify with our voltmeter. So at this point in the board, are we checking uh, um, 
Um, we check in DC. DC. DC still at the board. Yup. Okay. We check in output voltage. And what we should have? Twelve volts. Oh, right? this one? Yeah. Thank you. So let's go. Oh, let's plug it in. in. All right. Don't worry. It's gonna self. It's gonna self do this thing. We said blue, or sky blue to this guy. And gray. Now. It ain't turning yet. It, it, you remember these Samsungs take a little while. They just oh, don't turn on. I remember you saying that. Yeah, much. they just don't turn on. So give it a little bit. And let's go ahead and plug in these harnesses. That, fool, that fooled me one day, man. Oh, yeah, I'm cool. like, <laughs> you so do that way too? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I saw a video uh, of like the head on the video. That's I like, what I learned. What did I touch? Give it a second. So how would you know? The manual? I mean, how would you know which manufacturer is five minutes, ten minutes? I mean, how would you know that? Um, On the fast track, okay. it, it does make mention that it does uh, uh, take it's an the initial main, yeah. time. And let me not misquote oh, it. Wait so a minute. I'll, it's not plugged in either right here. Hold on. I'll pull in a fast track. And um, there we go. Okay, yeah. Had to click. Oh, that's that out. relay. Hold on. Oh, there we okay. Go. Eight eight volts DC. Look at our fan. It's spinning. You hear it. Okay. Now watch our fan. Look at our fan, guys. Now watch this. Okay. Now I'm gonna ask you guys a quick trick question. What if? We got output voltage here. Mm -hmm. We connect it there, and it's not spinning. And then we get voltage here at the bottom. Oh, we got a wiring problem. We got it. Oh, so you check the fan? No, no you put the fan in itself. Let me, let me, let me. Check it out. Check it out. You know what I mean? Look, we get to the job, and, and the fan isn't spinning. Right. We think, oh. It's either the board or the fan. We go to the board, but the board got good output voltage. Is our job done there? No. What should we do next? Check the bottom. Ah, and what should, okay. Now, what if, what if we get, uh, yeah. What if we don't get 12 volts in it? Well, you can get 12 volts at the board. It's a wire cut or something like that. You get 12 at the board. And not and that. You get a wire cut or something. Something's going on with that wire. And how, and, well, let's do that test. Continuity change, you know, with wire. Let's unplug the unit. I'm going to have each one of you guys do it. Unplug, unplug the molex down at the condenser fan. Well, you just said, you might show gray there. Down there, it doesn't show. It doesn't, show. It doesn't matter. It's still neutral. It's still neutral. It's still neutral. Oh, oh, I see what you mean. Nah, you'll see, watch. Watch. Hold on. We're going to test from there to right here. No, not that one. You want to test the other one? No, no, I'm looking at this side, so I know where to put it. I'm looking at this side. So, with this one, might have a little deeper ones? Yep. All right, the wiring is going to change.